today title is is command of God is promise. Well, it is command. I think this is the most important point in understanding the law of Moses. That's all commands. If you read in the letters, are they really command? That God is commanding us for us to do it. Otherwise, we are <laughs> dead. If that's true, then we cannot be saved. That what is command? Is command really promise of God? The promise of God, uh, the Bible says it's a covenant. Uh, covenant is a kind of promise but uh, in this human world, human society, uh, covenant uh, is uh, covenant is understood as a contract. Uh, contract is two-way promise. You and I both have to responsibility have a responsibility to keep but it's god's covenant in the bible it says covenant there's no word like a contract between god and us god can only promise to us that's a one-way promise, one-sided promise, or unilateral uh, promise. And the we can only what? That the believe that the God will keep his promise for me. It's not contract. When you understand, misunderstand contract, uh, God's covenant as a, a contract between God and us, then it is a huge misunderstanding. <clears throat> okay, so covenant is one-sided promise or two-way promise. It is really one-sided promise. Let us see whether it's really true or not. Is it really God's, God's promise is, is, is one-sided? I used to love this statement. Still, I believe this statement. Uh, this statement is uh, written by Ellen White. I used to, I, I used to love this. Yes, you know. uh, Look at this. Uh, it says every command is promise. You know. I say yes. Uh, Ellen White is really, really prophet. Because it, it, it really impressed me very powerfully that all God's uh, command is what? Promise? What a wonderful news, right? Uh, now, <clears throat> uh, but as long as you believe that the God command is a command, if you don't obey the command and you die, then it cannot be. A promise, right? It's law. But when I saw this statement, I was so happy. Then, in all other writing, all other statements, it didn't go along with this statement. So I started getting confused. 
Now, let's see if it is. God's command is really one-sided promise. It starts from the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, God said, Let there be light, he commanded. I want there is light in this dark earth. Let there be light. Who, who, to whom God is commanding? To himself. Yes. Because no one else but God can, <laughs> can do that. God is the only one who can uh, make there is what? Uh, light in this darkness. The only being can provide the light is God only. So he commanded, and then he did it. So he uh, commanded to himself, right? And then he did it. Commanding something to himself, to myself, is what? Promise. Right. Yeah. Let there be light means I will have a light shining in this dark earth. Right? It's, a, it's a, his, what? His promise at the same time, it is kind of what? Swear. He swears that he will do it. Because what? Because he wants to do it. Because there was no light in this earth before. There's only darkness. There's no life. There is only what? The death. God wants to provide life to this darkness, to this dead earth. Right? And God says, let there be light. And there was light. And okay, now Genesis chapter 1, verse 6, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from the water. Separate water from the water and make a space. Who can do it? Only God. So he commanded to himself and he did it. So let there be uh, now, verse 7 here. So God made expanse and separated water under the expanse from the water above it, and it was so. Next command. Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let the dry ground appear. Who can do it? Only God. So, can you see that? God's command is his promise. He's swearing. So what he is preparing now to create human being. Okay. And so he is commander, commander. He is the doer. Okay. So let's skip all these uh, verse eleven and on. So, so all if you read the, uh, the, the entire chapter one of the book of Genesis, then it's all a command, but it's all what promise. Same time. <clears throat> all right. Ah, uh, there's an interesting command here. When Jesus came. And uh, uh, Lazarus was dead for what? Four days before Jesus arrived. And uh, uh, he was in the what? Lazarus was in the tomb. And Jesus commanded, Lazarus, come out! 
definitely a command, right? Okay, is this a command or a promise? Is this a command or a promise? If it is a command, the Lazarus cannot come out. <laughs> it is what? It has to be promise. Why? Because Lazarus cannot even hear that command. Because he's, he's dead. Yeah. Lazarus did not comprehend and or hear, uh, heard the commandment. See? Is God, so Jesus is simply saying, I will make your life. I promise. I will give your life. Wonderful promise. Okay. So God's command is, or promise. So completely what? It's a, it is a promise which is completely one-sided promise. God will do, God wants to do what he wants to do. Has nothing to do with us. Lazarus does not even know whether Jesus came here or not. He didn't even hear the voice of Jesus. It's a totally one-sided, right? <clears throat> totally unilateral. So Lazarus did not hear the command. What Jesus meant was what? I will give you life. I, therefore, I give you life. I know you come alive, and then you'll walk out. Okay, so there is no contract. Okay, yeah. there is no two-way contract. Okay, but uh, uh, many uh, theologians, uh, unfortunately. Uh, teaches that uh, it's a two-way contract. Uh, you have to uh, promise God. You also have to promise God that yes, I will. I will obey. Others no. The earth cannot obey, right? So. It's an interesting statement Paul wrote in Hebrew, book of Hebrew, chapter 6, verse 13. For when God made a promise, promise to Abraham, God made them the promises, all kind of promises, but that, that, that he, since God had no one greater, no one greater, greater than he, he is, the God is, mm. greater by whom to swear. He swore by himself. So it's one way. One-sided uh, uh, promise. Now, let's look really at this. Genesis chapter, uh, chapter 17, verse 10. Uh, God says to Abraham, uh, This is my covenant with you and your descendant after you. The covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. And also, book of Leviticus, the law of Moses says, uh, on the eighth day, the flesh of your son's foreskin shall be circumcised. It's a definite command. Uh, cut it off, okay? The foreskin of your son on the eighth day after birth. Right? 
It's a command. But, uh, but what does this command of uh, uh, the law of circumcision really promise? You have learned this. I told you many times already. It is promising born again by giving, right? By giving Holy Spirit to the all sinners and he will make us born again and be saved. That's the promise. That promise is uh, the, the only one who can give that promise to all sinners is what? It's God only. Okay? So, God's command is a promise. The promise is what? Gift. Gift for nothing. <laughs> Only way to there's only only thing God asks for us to accept the gift is what believe it. Just believe it by faith, right? So okay, so so Leviticus uh, chapter twelve three says. Uh, uh, the, your son's foreskin shall be circumcised. It is definitely, it sounds like, it look like a command, but it is what God promising that I will, what? I will make you born again. And I'll send you a Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will circumcise your heart, and you'll be born again. What a, what a promise. It was not command at all. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, this Moses law of circumcision means, I will send you Holy Spirit. He will circumcise your heart for you to be born again. It was promised. Okay? Yeah. And uh, Moses himself, Moses himself says this. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. The Lord your God will circumcise your heart. It's not Paul alone. <laughs> Moses says this. Moses says what? Uh, yeah, the law of circumcision is uh, what is promise to do what? Uh, God will. Uh, 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 God will circumcise your heart. God will circumcise your heart means what? Holy Spirit. He will send Holy Spirit and circumcise your heart. And the heart, of, and then uh, as a result, what happens if you receive circumcision of your heart? The heart of your descendant, uh, you, uh, your heart, and the heart of your descendant, so that what happens? You may love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and live forever. Okay. So it's God's promise. This is what Moses is explaining. The law of circumcision he gave. It was not the command, it was what? It was uh, God's promise. Because if you don't receive the Holy Spirit and don't get circumcised in your heart, then you cannot love, right? You cannot love God with all your heart and with all your soul and live forever, eternal life. The God has to do it for you. And that's the what? Uh, law of circumcision, which is 
not command, which, and it was what? Promise. Okay. So, now I wish you, you really begin to have a, wow! You know, this, this exciting enlightenment, right? God's all commands are what? It's a promise. Then why God's command is promise? Because if it is command, we cannot obey it. That's why. If can, we can obey it, God does not have to give us promise to save us, right? To make us to uh, uh, be born again. If we can do that. Well, but no one can. So, therefore, no one can obey Moses' law. That's why, that's why, the all the law, the command in the law was what? All promise. God's swearing. Sworn promise. Isn't that right? Yeah. So God knew that we cannot keep, we cannot obey the law of Moses. For example, it's a circumcision. Can we circumcise our heart? No. That's why God says, I will do it for you. I promise you. Then, believe me. What a gift. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, now, Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 9. The Moses received from God on the Mount Sinai the uh, two tablets of stone, which is what? Uh, written uh, Ten Commandments. Commandments is what? Command. Right? Uh, command. And what Moses says about uh, uh, the tablets of the stone here, the tablets of stone. Uh, so Moses says, when I went up the mountain, Mount Sinai, to receive the tablets of stone, the tablets of the what? Covenant. On the, on the stone, tablet of stone, what is written? Command is written. Ten different commands. But Moses says what? It is tablets of covenant. All those ten commands were all what? Promise. Verse 10, the Lord gave me two stone tablets inscribed by a finger of God. On them were the commandments of the Lord proclaimed to you on the mountain out of the fire on the day of assembly. Then Moses says it again, at the end of the 40 days and the 40 nights, the Lord gave me two stone tablets, the tablets of what? Covenant. He said it was command. And it is what? Uh, it was a promise, the covenant. So, In the Exodus, book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 4, Moses then wrote down everything. Everything the Lord had said. He got up, and early the next morning, and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, 
and set up twelve stone pillars representing the twelve tribes of Israel. Then he sent young Israelite men, and they offered the burnt offering and the sacrificed young bulls as a fellowship offering to the Lord. And then Moses took the half of the blood and put it in the bowels and uh, bowls, <laughs> sorry, and other the other half sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of what? Covenant. I see. It's not book of the law. Moses called this book. He wrote. He wrote down everything, all the laws God gave him, he wrote down. And he made a book. Then he called it what? Book of the law? No. Book of covenant. So, Moses and everybody in the Bible, they knew that all God's command is what? It's uh, not the command, it's a law. The reason why it was not command was why? Because if it is command, everybody dies, because no one can obey it. That's why uh, it, God gave that commands with what? Promise. I will keep it for you. Uh, I will... Uh, Die for you. So, uh, so in this Moses law, right, we can definitely see uh, the the book of covenant. Now, we read this uh, uh, Exodus chapter twenty-four uh, from verse four that you can see they after they received. The promise of God, which is a covenant of God. And Moses understood it was all promise. That's why even he called it what? Book of Covenant. And uh, now, Moses understood it, it's uh, all the law was the promise of what? Promise of God that he will send his son Jesus, uh, uh, the Lamb of God, right, will die for us. That's why even though we cannot obey the law, we will be saved and become what? circumcise on our heart and become born again. And then we will be resurrecting and we will be a new creation. Wonderful, right? Yeah, wonderful. Mm. Mm. So, so Moses understood that all the law he received on the Mount Sinai was a promise of Jesus coming and saving us, right? So uh, when when Jesus comes, he will what? He will die for us. So Moses did what? And he built an altar, altar in Korea, Jedan. Moses built an altar, and uh, and who will die for us? The Son of God, Jesus. Then, he need what? Some kind of animal symbolizing Jesus who will die upon the altar. So that's why he killed a bull. And he got the blood. Then he what? He sprinkled the blood on the altar. And on the people, see, see, 
This is the God's promise that He will send His Son Jesus, and He will die for us. So, the, the, because of His death, Jesus' death, because of His blood, you will be what saved. So, yes, God will save you with the blood of His Son Jesus. I want you to know, Jesus, God will send Jesus to you. So that's what all this what ceremony. Wow. So it was definitely, Moses' law was definitely not command. It was what? Promise that God gave us that he will send his son and his son will die. For us, because what? Because the law of Moses, no one can obey. Okay. So Moses took half of the blood and put it in the bowls, and the other half, and he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the, uh, 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 he took the, Book of Covenant and read it to the people. They responded, and and they they said, "We will do everything Lord says." Is that right response? We will do it. We will circumcise. No, you can't say that we will circumcise on our heart. The only being to circum to be able to circumcise on our heart and make us born again is God Himself, Holy Spirit. They should not say that. What they should have said that. Yes, thank you. We believe. But instead, they said what. We will do it. What Ten Commandments says what? You shall not come covet. You know? And they said what? Okay, we are not covet. We are not going to covet anything. Is that possible? Impossible. They didn't know what they, they did not see. The God's promise in the Moses law, saying, "What I will send my son and save you because you cannot obey this law." That's the promise. Okay, so and then also uh, uh, it says. The Ark of, Ark of the Covenant. What is the Ark of Covenant? It's a, it's a chest they made to put two tablets of stone written with what? Ten Commandments. So, uh, Moses called the two tablets of stone the tablets of what? Covenant. So they made a chest and they put them in. They called this chest what? Ark of Covenant. Not Ark of Law. Well, after I become a Christian, I never really understood. It was long. It was about forty years ago. I never understood why the Moses call it Ark of Covenant instead of what Ark of Law. So in the entire Bible, I I, I searched, and I could not find anywhere the Ark of the Law. Uh -uh. 
It is what all Ark of uh, Ark of the Covenant and all Ark of the Lord, the Ark of Testimony, Ark of No Law. Uh uh none. It doesn't exist. Hmm. That much Moses' law is what law is the promise. That's a covenant. Okay. The Ten Commandment is what? Covenant, promise. Uh, so therefore, uh, many Christians understood, understanding the Ten Commandments as moral law, which we must keep. You really can keep that, that thou shalt not covet. Covered means tamnenungo, uh, tamsim in Korean. Okay. So, so Moses says what he was sprinkling blood to everybody and say Moses took the blood, blood. And sprinkled it on the people, said, This is blood of the covenant. This is blood of Jesus, God promised to send us, to save us. This is the law. This is the what? Covenant. God's promise. So God's law is God's what? Promise. Yeah. Now the question here. Question. The law of Moses with the Ten Commandment is all command. Then, why all those commands are covenant? Because no one can obey those commands. Why no one can obey the commandments? For example, here, Paul said, at Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, he says, Covetousness is what? Idolatry. In Korean, 탐심은 우상 숭배다. Commandment says what? Thou shalt not worship idol. No idolatry. But we all covet. So we are breaking the Ten Commandments idolatry commandments. And we need to be honest to us. Why people say, I do not understand, the Ten Commandment alone is a moral law, so it, we still have to obey Ten Commandment. Any other law, okay, you don't have to obey anymore. But Ten Commandment, we need to obey still. So you don't have any idol. <laughs> You never covet, or you 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 love your neighbor, you love your enemy as yourself. Uh uh that's what Ten Commandment whole Ten Commandment is saying. You see. We need to be honest before God and also honest to ourselves. We really admit that we cannot obey the Moses law. So it has to be what? Promise. Otherwise we die, you know. Because we cannot keep the, uh, 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 the law. And the, so the punishment that you don't keep the law is what? The death. 
execution. So, this is the commandment, the covetousness, which is idolatry. No, we can't obey Ten Commandments because our sinful nature. We're born without any ability to be able to obey the Moses law. Our, our nature is a sinful, a sinful nature. If you are able to, and the David says in Psalm 51, what? I, when I was conceived in my mother's womb, I was already a sinner. I was born a sinner. So if you are able to obey the law of Moses, then if you are able to obey the Lord Moses, if you can obey the what? Ten Commandments, then you can save yourself. You don't need Jesus. Yeah. You don't need Jesus. Yeah. So, so, if you're able to obey the Lord Moses, then you can save yourself. Then, all those commands can be a covenant. Why? If you can obey all those uh, commandments, why it need to be covenant, right? God does not have to give you promise that uh, I will save you. God does not need to do that. Why? Because we all are able to uh, obey the Moses law and we can save ourselves. The reason why God's command is all covenant, the promise, is because we are not able to obey the Moses law. It is impossible for us to uh, obey the Moses law. If you are able to obey the law of Moses, then you can save yourself. Then all those commands can be a Promise, okay. God will simply let us do what we can do to save us. Okay, go ahead, be saved, and keep the Moses law. Okay, uh, every law, uh, keep it, and then I'll wait for you in heaven. He can do that. He doesn't have to sacrifice his son Jesus on the cross if we can. Obey the Moses law. God, uh, oh, okay. If we are able to obey the Moses law of Moses with our own ability to save ourselves, then there is no need for God to promise anything for our salvation, because there is no need for His Son to die for our salvation. God promised our salvation because we can't obey the law of Moses to save ourselves. Okay. Clear? Very clear. And that's why the Paul says in Roman, book of Roman, chapter 3, 20, therefore no one no one will be declared righteous in his sight by what? By observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. So, when the law comes to us, then we say, wow, sin. Wow, I'm sinner. I cannot do this. So, finally, we need help from God, right? So, well, uh, chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, 20 says, I told you about this uh, several times already, uh, the law came in to increase sin. Law only increase 
How sinful we are! Wow, I'm really a sinner. I cannot obey this law. That's all law do. Then we need what? God's promise. Okay, okay, you can't save yourself, right? By keeping the law. And don't worry. I promise you, my son, I've sent you my son and to die for you. And you'll be saved. Then we can say, yeah! You know. In, in our life, uh, we also see when you love so much each other, you love someone, your command can be your promise. Just like what? A mother, a mother just had a little baby. And the mother Mother commands her newborn baby, and the mother commands this way. Oh, my little darling, now have some mommy's milk. Have some mommy's milk. That's a command. Right? Is that a command? This can't be command. Why? Because uh, just newborn baby cannot understand what mother is saying. This is God, he, mommy, mother herself is what promising baby that okay, I will give you some milk. Right. So when there is a love, finally, command can become promise. When there's no love, command will be command forever. <laughs> command, command can never become promise, right? So why God's command is a promise? Because God is what love. That's why. So there is an. <clears throat> There is not a command. This is one-sided promise because the baby cannot understand anything what mother says. In love, every mother's command, in love, every mother's command to her baby is a what? A promise. Just like we read at the start, the Ellen White statements, every command is a promise. Same thing. Okay. To, uh, to command is every command to her baby is a promise to bring up her baby, to raise baby up, right? To make baby healthy and happy. So, so, we are children of God, who is love. Therefore, every command of God to us is a promise to save us from sin. And then have life eternal. Hallelujah. What? And uh, so, says, my dear children, listen to me carefully. That's what God says. My dear children, I love you. Listen to me carefully. And you can't obey the law of Moses. Can you really love your enemy as yourself? No, you can't. Ten Commandments, you shall not covet. Really? You can? No, you can't. If the law of Moses is really command, none of you can obey, therefore you all die. But I cannot see you all die. I want you to live because I love you, right? 
My dear children, I promise you, I will die for you. Please trust me. Believe me. I will surely keep my promise for you. Amen. Did he keep the promise? Yes, he did. He kept it on the, on the cross for all of us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.